You're listening to LA 40 with Katerina Kozias only on LA Talk Radio. All right. Good morning, Los Angeles, and Happy New Year. My God, it's 2019. I'm your host, Katerina Kazayas, and you are tuning in to LA Talk Radio and our TV set here. I am joined by a very special guest today who is sitting just over here to my left. First, before I introduce him, I'm going to keep you guys in suspense for just a couple of minutes. I wanted to wish everyone a really happy new year. Again, you may be following us on latalkradio.com or You may be tuning in via Facebook because in this day and age of social media, which we're going to get into today, we are all joined and um, and the world is becoming a smaller place. So speaking of the world, I have a gentleman here in my studio who has come from literally the other side of the world and made the American dream happen. So big, big shout out and thank you to my special guest, Riyad Hamdi, for making it to the program today. How are you? Good. Thank you so much, Katrina, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I thank am you. very excited to have you. So for those of you who may not know Riyad, Riyad is an American entrepreneur originally from Tunisia. He has built uh, a mini empire for himself and, and really followed a destiny that we're going to talk about whether that was set for him or whether... He said it, and that's a question I want to get into a little bit later. But he is the author of a book called The $2 American Dream, What People Are Saying and How to Make That Happen. So what I'd love you to do, Riyad, is talk to us a little bit about where you came from and how you came to be in America. Uh, I grew up in North Africa and Tunisia, and uh, we're five kids. Mm. And I'm the youngest one. And um, I go home and said, Mommy, Mommy, I'm home. I'm home. What do we have for dinner tonight? Mm. And my mom, uh, she's in the kitchen, she's crying, said, we don't have food for tonight. And we hold hands and we go sit down the floor, said, mommy, it's okay, we, we don't have food for tonight, but I have you, mommy. Wow. And How um, old were you? Uh, five, six, five years, mm. yeah, you're very young. I, I, play so- I love play soccer, I never have tennis shoes, I play barefoot, mm. and uh, I remember I go home, said, mommy, mommy, we win, I'm excited about winning the game. And my feet all bloody. And my mom said, what happened for your feet? I said, mommy, pain is the name of the game. You have to get hurt to win. Mm. And that was a philosophy you had at five, six, seven, eight years old. Yes. Wow. Yeah, seeing my mom crying every day. And um, in the winter, is very cold. We don't have heater in the winter. And um, we go find the small pieces of wood, and we make a small fires. And, um, and me and mom, we sit down on the, on the floor around the fires. And my mom tell me about her struggle. And... Um, and I'm look, I remember I'm looking at the fire, and my mom said, why are you looking at the fire? Mm. I said, Mommy, I don't want the fire to end because of the fire end, my mom going to be cold. Mm. And I decided to be the fire for my mom. And that's what I did. I decided to be the fire for my mom and um, make sure my mom don't cry no more. Wow. So you put this in your mind to become the protector of your mom. How did you make the decision? How old were you when you said, I need to leave Tunisia. There's not enough opportunity here. I'm going to go to the motherland. 27. And um, why I did... Um, so you stayed in Tunisia till you were 27? Yes. Interesting. Somebody approached me and said, do you want to go to America? And they said, what? <laughs> Going to America? I don't have no money. I don't have food to eat. What are you talking about? Mm. said, yeah, we, we, we have um, 14 days vacation to America. That, and uh, y- y- have you need to come up with $1,400. People have to... like. And why I did said try to find people to donate $1,400 for you. And remember, it took me one year to find $1,400. I go knock doors. I said, I'm going to America. Do you want me to clean your backyard? Do you want me to uh, clean your house, clean the bathroom? And uh, I'm going to America to save my mom. And my mom crying. I'm knocking doors. And people give me $2, $3, I go. And um, took me one year to, to collect $1,400. Now, I just want to pause you right there because what I failed to mention at the beginning of the program, this man spent a year trying to come up with $1,400 to get himself to America on a trip at that yeah, point. Yeah, correct. What I didn't mention is in the time that he's been here, he came here in 2000, and I'm going to bump it back to you, I yeah. promise. Yeah. He has since developed and has his own line of juice bars across Southern California. He has an activewear um, brand that he has. He is an Instagram influencer and consultant, probably the best in the nation. And he also is an author and an international uh, and national speaker now. So all of that has happened in the last almost 20 years. 
but it took him that effort and that motivation to get that money. So you get this money together. Yes. You literally spend a year to get fourteen hundred dollars. Then what happened? Fourteen hundred dollars, and I came here in two thousand. We we came um, uh, sixty people, and uh, for fourteen days, and um, and the last day. Now, was this, sorry to interrupt you, was this just a vacation? Was yeah. it like a, a vacation, scouting company? Okay. Va vacation Where did trip. you go when you came? Which cities? Uh, we, went to, we went to Florida. Okay. And, you, and the, the last one is LA. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the last day, everybody taking the bus and going to the airport. Okay. And I told everybody, I'm staying. Mm. And people said, you staying? You're crazy. You, I have only $2 in my pocket. Only $2. And the only word I know in English is job. Okay, so you didn't even know English at this Your point. Your job. And people said, no, you want to die today. Don't do it. Come with us. We're going home. Said, no, I'm, I'm dying every day in my country. Said, I'm, I'm, I'm go today, I'm, today I'm going to make my mom proud. Today, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Today. Like, I have the mission. Today I'm going to make my mom proud. And um, everybody said, no, don't do it. And everybody took the bus. And everybody went to the airport, going home. And, um, and you stayed? By myself. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I got goosebumps all the way running up and down. You end up staying in a country where you don't know the language, you don't know anyone, and you have $2 in your pocket. What the heck did you do? Yes, I get scared. I get very <laughs> scared. When everybody left, I get, wow. I said, well, I'm doing this, and why? And if, if I die tonight, if I don't find place tonight, I'm then homeless, what, what happened? Did my family know about me? I, mean, I think my, um, my dreams is more bigger than my fears. Mm. I think seeing my mom crying every day and see the struggle make me like, I don't wanna see my mom cry no more. Mm -hmm. And I remember I start walking in Hollywood in LA, I say job and I get rejected and they say job, I get rejected and they say job, I get rejected. Mm -hmm. Always people ask me what the reason you kept knocking the doors. Uh, it's not how many doors you knock, it's who's behind the door you wanna change your life. Is is not how many doors you knock. It's who's behind the door and change your life. It's not how many doors you knock on. It's who's behind the door that might change your life. Yes. Wow. And always and uh, kept me going in life. Like kept me going. Like when I'm walking Hollywood, they said one day my mom have hot water. One day my mom don't cry no more. One day my mom have food. One day I have all these pictures in the front for me, and I kept going. And I remember I'm knocking the knocking the doors. I'm finally. The owner for the restaurant is from Morocco, mm -hmm. and he speaks the same language like me, Arabic. And I told him, please give me a job. He said, no. He said, please give me a job. He said, no, I cannot have you. I, you don't speak English. I cannot have you. I beg him. I beg him. I start crying. I said, please, my mom struggle. Give me a job. For, uh, give me a place to sleep tonight. After I beg him, said, okay, go clean the bathroom, clean the floor, and sleep in the floor. And I did this for, I did this for nine months. I remember I cleaned the floor very good because I know I'm going to sleep <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> if there's some incentive <laughs> to clean well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know I'm going to sleep on the floor, and uh, I did this. And there are people always ask me, you slept in the floor? I tell everyone, yes, I slept in the floor, but I slept in America floor. It's not a regular floor. It's America floor. It's opportunity. And uh, that's why I did every day. And, um, yeah, it's a fun journey. And, and, I, and that's very minimalizing, I'm sure, the effort and the time and the, um, and the intention. Yeah. Um, I know that there is so much depth to your story. And what I want to commend you for is sticking with the integrity to what seems like a promise you made to yourself when you were just a little guy. Oh. And that was to do what you could to protect your mom, to see that she has a better life, to see that Correct. she stops to cry. Yeah. And you stayed true to that. Yeah. One of the things that I know to be very true, and I know it to be true um, for myself, and I see it in a lot of other people, happiness comes from integrity to your own self. If you're not happy, it's because you're not doing what you have promised yourself internally yeah. you are meant to do. And, uh, and you clearly have been successful. I, I don't want to jump over it, but I do want to ask you a little bit about the things in between the journey. Yeah. Uh, I touched on something at the beginning of the episode, which was destiny. Yeah. So do you think destiny controls us or do we control destiny? I, th I think we can be we can be both, you know what I mean? Mm. You can be you can be both, you know what I mean? And um uh, for me it's more like um find your why mm. and um and and your why was very clear. Yeah, my right. why is very clear. My mom don't want my mom cry no more. <laughs> I think find your why and you keep going in life and mm. Sometimes it take you one day, two days, three days, one year. In the end, you're going to be okay. How long did it take you to go back to Tunisia? Yeah, it took me like 
10 years, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I remember, I think the most powerful phone call I still remember, I'm, um, when I came here, I never talked to my mom for six months. And because I don't have no money to call my mom, and we don't have phone too. Right, this is before cell phones. Yes, this is, you in know, 2000. Back in the days, you remember with the phone booths? Exactly. <laughs> and the quarters. I remember I called my mom after, I, I'm waiting for the phone call after six months. I, I called the neighbor, said, hey, can I talk to my mom? And my mom comes, said, hey, mom. And, she, and she's like, oh, my God. She, mom, I thought, I'm alive, mom. <laughs> I'm alive. And uh, she, uh, we start talking. I thought, hey, mom, I'm going to send you money to buy food. And uh, this is, I think, the most uh, powerful thing in my life. I said, mom, I'm, I'm going to send you money to make sure you have food. And then, because I'm waiting for this moment, I'm working every day. I said, I can't wait to do a phone call for my mom and tell her, hey, mommy, you can buy food now. And um, I think this is what kept me going for the first six months. Because when I came, I said, I don't want to call my mom because I don't have nothing to offer. I don't have no, nothing to, I don't wow. have news for her. I want to make sure she have good news with me. Wow. And so you work for six months. You yeah. sleep on the floor, uh, but it is a floor in America. Yeah, it's America floor, yes. Right. Um, when you were young, did you have a lot of American influence? Did you have uh, access to seeing what America looked like? How much, how much um, was that maybe subconsciously in your mind, or, mm, or was it? No, I don't have. I thought, I thought when I'm young, all the country look like the same, my countries. Mm. <laughs> I I, I've been to Tunisia. Yes. Uh, I've been to Tunis, um, and so I, I have a real sense of... Um, Maybe some of the some of the were some of the places that you grew up might have looked like, uh, although that may be a big city compared to where you're yeah, from. Yeah, I grew up in small town okay. called Gaps, a small town. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And I thought all the country looked my same. When, when I came to America, I think I get very surprised. Mm. I said, wow, uh, I never saw elevator in my country. I said, wow, green light. I, in small town, we don't have green light. We don't have red light. Red, light. And red you didn't have shoes. Yes. So it's like let's shoes. Start there, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. I play barefoot, and they mm. said, wow. Like when I, when I come here, I said, "Wow, you have elevator, you have green light, you have red light," and uh, I'm looks at, "Wow." When I, I remember when I go to the supermarket, I said, "Wow, this supermarket can feed all my hometown, <laughs> like see food everywhere." And said, I, "Like I go to the supermarket, I go to the grocery store, I walk around without buying nothing because I don't have no money to buy. I just walk around, I'm getting excited." Mm. Said one day I can get food, one day I can buy anything. I'm walk around, seeing the light, seeing the food. Said, "Wow, this is so cool," and uh, I'm excited about. One day I can I can I can I can afford something from there, mm. and said, "Wow, this this grocery store can feed all my hometown," and right. I'm excited about um, everything. So, how did you step into the increase of opportunity? Because you've now come to a place where you are uh, a serial entrepreneur, a very successful businessman. How did how did those doors open for you? Those proverbial doors. I think always in life I like to go step by step. Okay. First, I slept in the floor. Don't like I said later, next step on have a bed and pillow and cover. I always want to go step by step in life. Said so I'm excited. So one day I have bed, I can sleep and cover and pillow. Uh, I'm thinking about this. After each time, I want to add one more step in my life. Like said, oh, if I have and if I have bed one day, I get excited. If I have pillow one day, I get excited. If I have cover one day, I get sad. I can do this. And oh, if I can buy food every day, I'm excited. Like I said, oh, if I can buy food every day, I'm so excited. I'm trying to do everything step by step. You know, there's, um, there's a scene in one of the Indiana Jones movies. We were yeah. talking about this with some friends over uh, New Year's. And there's a, sp there's a spot where Indiana Jones is, his father is dying, and he's got to go get the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail is on the other side of this cliff. Mm -hmm. And between the cliff that Indiana Jones mm -hmm. is on and the cliff that he needs to get to is nothing. Yeah. It's this big, you yeah. know, that... And he knows that he needs to cross this, this mountain to yeah. get his father saved. Mm. And the only thing he can do is take a step in faith yeah. and in trust yeah. that the next step he makes and takes is going to be supported. Yeah. And what he does is he throws a little bit of dirt down into this canyon yeah. and takes a step blindly. And all of a sudden, there's a support that has yeah. materialized. And I think that's a really nice metaphor for the way life actually works but too many people are scared to take the step yeah too many people sit in the misery sit in the why me sit in the fear sit in the scarcity sit in the lack you were not sitting in lack even when you were in lack you yeah. were sitting in one day i'm gonna be here yeah yeah a lot of sometimes people look for shortcuts and sh mm -hmm. li life is a long game you know what i mean mm -hmm. long game you have to go step by step and mm -hmm. You know, and when you do this, you, uh, you have to organize yourself. Like, you don't want to skip steps, you know what I mean? And for me, like, 
and I want to get excited in every steps. I want this excitement, you know what I mean? Oh, I did it. I have cover now. I have food now. Right. And after I said, I always love to be personal trainer. Like I want, I said, I want to have a job now. And then um, I apply for personal trainer and, and get to be personal trainer. And cool. this is what I did. Like I said, each time I want to add one more thing. And um, mm-hmm. and in life, if you go step by step, because in my country, we, we dream only in the night. In America, we dream all day here. Mm. Here we dream all day here. Don't the, if, if I think a lot of people missed it here. Like if you actually, if, if you're here, you made it actually. You actually made it. <laughs> say that to these guys because a lot of people um, I know that, that tune in for our show here um, are big believers in, in developing your own um, world and, and carving it out. Uh, but there are some people that tune in that may not be feeling that way. So just say that again because it's important for people to hear that. Yes. If, if you're here in America, you already made it. Mm. You already made it. <laughs> right. You're already halfway. Yeah. You already. So <laughs> I think it's. I think that's a really pivotal thing to recognize and to understand. Um, if you're coming from the Western world right now, and you may be thinking, "Oh, geez, I wish I had that car," um, are you thankful that you have a car? Period. Are you thankful? Maybe you don't have a car at all, but there is a, a an infrastructure and a roadway and a system in place for you for when you do get that car. And exactly. I think coming back to that place of appreciation is so important. You have to appreciate all the small things to get mm. to the big, thi- big thing. Very important. Like if uh, if you get up and you have cover and you have pillow and you have hot water and you have shoes and food in the table, you already made it. What do you say to guy to a guy though who let's say is sitting in his workplace right now and he just he's given up and he says, you know what, I just it's not going to happen for me. I had this dream. I, I can't make it. What do you say to him? You, you cannot g- in life you cannot give up like you, you cannot come to this world and leave and nobody know your name mm. like a lot of people miss this like you, you you're here because you can be a chair you can be a table you're actually here and uh, we all have 24 hours mm. we all have 86,400 seconds we all have 24 hours like this is what people missing we're all here mm-hmm. like uh, d- d- if you want to be happy study happiness if it a lot of people sometimes said, I'm struggling making money because you have the wrong formula from the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> if you have the wrong so so uh, how important are mentors? Very important. Okay. Very important. You, you, if you don't have a, you have to have a life coach. You have to have somebody check on, uh, check on him one time a week. Right. You cannot be your mom. You cannot be your family. <laughs> you have to be somebody real, mm. real with you. A lot of people said, oh, you're amazing. No, I know I'm amazing. I don't need them. You're amazing. I don't need another fan call. I, I don't I need know. a cheerleader. Ex- I need I know. Some, some wisdom and some counsel. My dad always tell me, listen to somebody give you a hard time. Don't mm. Because the people give you a hard time if the people care about you, actually. Mm. They'll actually challenge you a little challenge bit. Challenge you, yes. yes. Challenge you. And uh, yeah, this is what you do. That and keep you accountable, I think. That's important, right? As you just said, check in with someone once a week so they can actually say, hey, you had said you're going to do X, Y, Z. Did you actually do it or did you sit around watching Netflix all day? Exactly. Right? And I tell everybody, like, uh, don't watch the news. Make the news. <laughs> like, a lot of people miss it. Like, always ask people. Okay, the question I ask everybody. If you have one hour left in your life, mm-hmm. just one hour left, what's something you left here to people learn? Mm. B- it's not car it's not your house or do you have a book do you have something like ask yourself if you have w- uh, one hour left what's something you left for people to learn mm. if you can get to this you're a winner well the reason I wrote the two dollar American dream book our people said uh, when, I, when, I, when I told everybody I'm going to write a book people said oh uh, you don't speak English you <laughs> cannot write a book I told them my heart speak English mm. my heart speak all the language and I don't want my daughter or my kids said Daddy left me a house and car. Now I want Daddy left me something to learn. Daddy the book. left me a legacy. Yeah, legacy. Daddy yes. slept in the floor. Daddy helped. Yeah. Ca- d- Daddy come here to save his family. Now you have two children. Yeah, I have Mad- Madeline, and Allison, ten and nine. Madeline yes. and Allison, ten and Addison nine. And, uh, Madeline and Addison, Addison ten and nine. Addison and, and Madison. Uh, yeah, Madeline. <laughs> Madeline, Faith, Addison, Hope. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because why not name your kids those middle names? I love that. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. And you are happily married, yes. which is also a nice thing. Yeah, Amy, yes. My wife is Amy, yes. She's amazing, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I look at life, and I, uh, I've i done a fair amount of traveling in my in my lifetime as well. I've been to, to many different countries, yeah. and I'm originally from Canada. Yeah. So uh, I have a, a real sense of Western developed world versus not. And I think the one thing I always come back to is it's a, it's a choice in how we decide to view life. Because I've been to some of the poorest places in the world, yep. and the people are 
very happy. Correct. They're happy because they can just appreciate what they do have. Yeah. And somehow, I think in a lot of it, in fairness to a lot of American Western society, the advertising system, the the the, the bigger people at play have instilled a bit of a fear element into society. Yeah. If you don't have this car, you're never going to get the girl. If you don't have these eyelashes, you're never going to be beautiful. Yep. If you don't do this, you're never going to get that. And so there's a scarcity sort of built in intrinsically into society yep. here. Yep. That I loved what you said a little bit earlier. Don't watch the news. Make the news. Correct. Right? Yeah. 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 A lot, of, a lot of people, I think, missing more like um, a lot of people forget money is just a number, never end. Mm. If you're chasing money, you're chasing the wrong dreams. It just uh, train for legacy. Don't train for life. Get, yes, up, train f get up in the morning and do your best. And another thing, uh, to touch on the money yeah. that you just talked about, another thing that I've come to recognize as well is there is something very different about money consciousness versus wealth consciousness. Yeah. Right? Everyone has money consciousness. Everyone wakes up in the morning and wants to make money, has to make money, needs to make money. Yeah. Um, there's that element, and then there's the element of the wealthy. Yeah. And the wealth mindset, the wealth consciousness comes with appreciation and gratitude and hope and creativity and collaboration and all these things that, that build into allowing for deep wealth to come into your world. Exactly what you said is very important. A lot of people, a lot of people sometimes forget. So I tell everybody, always connect with the people from the inside, not from mm -hmm. the outside. Right. From the inside, you, you get a business partner for life. From the outside, you get just you get a friend. You get a contract, right? Exactly. And then, and then yeah. you sue each other three years later. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people like chasing the wrong thing. Right. Like uh, if somebody call me the number, no, I'm not going to pick up the phone because I don't have nothing for in it for me or mm -hmm. something like. It is a lot of people forgetting the big picture. Like a lot of people see only straight line. A straight line. You have to see behind the corner. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't see behind the corner. How do you see behind the corner, though? Explain that. How you see behind? Is that behind just your visioning? Is that your your intention? What what? How do, how does that happen? Behind the corner, when you're helping somebody, help him because you want to help him, not because something in it for you. Mm. This is what people see it. See it because you never know. Like a lot of people said, oh, I'm I'm not helping him. Why? I don't need him. Me, who you know? My dad always tell me, you never know who's your boss. Mm. You never know who's your boss. Like you never, you never burn bridge. You always be there for everybody. You always be there for everybody. Do you mind if I go on just a, a teeny tiny little yeah. uh, rant yeah. uh, on millennials? Yeah. And I love millennials. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I think most of them are great. But but I had um, <laughs> to that point. Don't burn your bridges. Yeah. I was uh, working with a couple of interns back in uh, in September October, and they were in their early twenties. Both of them separate. They didn't know each other. It was two separate projects. Yeah. And both of them, after a little bit of time, just disappeared. Yeah. Didn't, just disappeared. Didn't send an email saying, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. I'm sorry, I got stuck in school. I'm sorry, I got hit by a bus. Like, nothing. They just disappeared into yeah. oblivion. Yeah. And I thought, wow, we don't know where any of us is going to be in 10 years. And if me or any of my network is going to be in a position to hire them, yeah. At the very least, have the integrity when you're interacting with someone yeah. to have some sort of um, respect exactly. for even yourself. And I don't know if it's generational, and I don't mean to throw it on poor millennials, but it was just, it's incredible to me. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're hiding behind these little cell phones. Yeah. We don't actually ever have to meet in person. I don't actually ever have to feel your yeah. heart space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. and I are here physically in this space right now. There is energy that is flowing exactly. through here yeah. Yeah. that is going to minimize my wanting to be an asshole to you yeah. because exactly. I actually do now know you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And so I think we need to be a little bit careful about how techy this world has gotten. Exactly. What you said is very important. And I always when I, when I spoke last time, I told everybody, uh, Everybody have phone me. Your phone call a smartphone. Okay. And ninety eight percent people have a dumb phone, not <laughs> smartphone actually. Your phone, smartphone. You mean your phone is only to add value to people or to make money? Mm. This is the phone you. You add value to people or you make money. Speaking of which, you yeah. use your phone to make money. I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> the business that you are killing right now, and that is social media, specifically Instagram. Yes, so you correct. are uh, one of the leading experts in Instagram these days. Talk to me about how you use your smartphone in a smart way and how other people can do that. 
Correct. Well, I remember when I did Instagram, every, everybody telling me, why are you posting every day? Why are you, you're annoying? Why are you posting every day? And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're annoying. You're posting every day. I said, yeah. I think al- always for me, when I, when I like to do something, I like to master it. I like to do a good job. You don't have halfway. You're all the way in, mm-hmm. all the way out. Uh, let, let, I want to share another story before I go sure. to Instagram. Okay, this story helped me so much. When I came to America in 2000, I never, I walk and I saw this black box. And I told my friend, what's this black box? And my friend said, oh, this is elevator. Because I never saw elevator in my country. I said, oh, this is, I thought it's a black box. And the door opened, I get so scared. I said, why, <laughs> what happened? And, and I stay halfway and the door cannot close. I said, oh, let me see. I said, how about let me stay outside and watch, see what happened. My after said, oh, if I'm outside, I cannot be inside. But I don't know what's happening, right? Don't, I realize the only way to go to the top is to go all the way in. Mm. Then the question everybody have to ask, are you all the way in in your life? Are you all the way in in your business? Uh, Because I'm all the way in. Uh, Everybody, come with me, the elevator is so big. And the only way you get to the top is Is if you're all all the way way in. in. Yes. It's the same thing we come back to Instagram. When I did Instagram, I never did, I did it for fun, I love it. I I did it to make money too. It's good when you do something for fun and you make money. It's good. It's fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's good. Look, this is what I did. I post every day and I start study people similar to th- th- my expertise, like inspiration, motivation speaker. Like, I love Gary Vaynerchuk. I love Ty Lopez, Brian Tracy. Because they're all the way in, though. All the Look way at in. these guys. Yeah. You all know, the way in. They're exactly. all the way in. And guess where their elevator went, right? Yeah, well, all the way to the top. Yeah. And this is what I did. I studied these people. I said, these people are already all the way in. Right. Let, <laughs> let me follow these people. It's free information there. It's already there. And they start studying people and um, and this is what I did, I post every day. And after I say, wait a second, I can be providing service now. And, uh, and this is what I did. Because now I've mastered it. Exactly. Now when you, when you master it, when you, when you love something and you do it every day, you're going to master it. Mm-hmm. The, the problem a lot of people, are, anybody can start me, can you finish it? <laughs> anybody, like, you know, sometimes, like, especially now 2019, everybody says, oh, I'm going to get in shape and go That's to the gym. It. Especially right now, right? New Year's resolution. The gym is busy. Get, right? The gym is busy for 30 days. Me, can you stay busy? Mm-hmm. To the end, and this you stay in it. Ex- yeah. This is what people missing. It's not the first half hour, half mm-hmm. half hour, the second half hour in the game. Now the thing is, you talk about mastery, and yet you have built so many different businesses, so many different facets Correct. to the way you monetize your passion and your life. Yeah. Is it more important to master one thing, specialize in one thing, or can you actually branch out and do multiple businesses? This is this is a good question. This is why I tell everybody when I, when I do my life coach, when people ask me or I speak. It's better take one thing, mm-hmm. do it for 12, 16 months, master this, master it actually, after have team take over and go to the next subject. Mm-hmm. It's better, this is what I did, I said, I wanna know my Instagram, I wanna know how I do it. I don't want nobody hold me for my neck. Right. Okay. I wanna know. Look, it's better master something, sometimes take you six months, 12 months, master everything, and after have hire team to run it, and go move to the next subject. Mm-hmm. And this is what I did. When I have my juice bars, I did the same thing, and the hire, I hired Tom, and now Tom run all my juice bars. Mm-hmm. Now I went to Instagram. I did Instagram by myself for like 14 months, by myself, by myself. Now I have my team helping me now, right. and now I do Instagram consulting for celebrities. Don't, this is what I do. Don't, what you do, you master it mm-hmm. after you have team run it, and you move to the next one. All, my dad always tell me, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. You always have, and this is more fun too when you have I different so. incomes. It's yes. more fun. It's like you don't li- you don't get bored in life. Well, and they say again, going back to the truly wealthy have multiple streams of income, and a lot of times it's passive residual income, because you can't y- you get to a point where you tap out your hours for your time. You, you there because there are only twenty four hours in a day. Yeah. And so you have to be smart about how can you make money while you sleep. That's exactly. The question. That's the question for two thousand nineteen that I would invite you to think about. How can you get your business to a place where it's going to be 10 years from now a lot sooner than 10 years from now? Exactly. So these are the kinds of questions that you need to be asking yourself, in my opinion, as we head into 2019. And what you said is very good. I tell everybody uh, is about make how we can make money 24 hours. The, the mistakes people make, like when I, when I talk about other people, other people said, oh, uh, the Riyadh, I'm struggling. Like uh, when you ask somebody sometimes, sometimes people said, oh, uh, let's, uh, let's give an example. Sometimes people said, I want to make 10,000 a month. Okay. Tell them, okay, do you know how much cost by hour? Our people don't know this. Hmm. If you want to make 10,000 a month, it costs $14 by hour. For tw- if you make $14 every hour 
for, for 24, 24 hours, hours for you make 10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Doc, people don't know that. <laughs> Doc, the reason a lot of people said, why I need to know about hour? Let me tell you why you need to know why you're making the hour by hour. Because if you are on the parking lot or whatever places, mm -hmm. and you talk to somebody and you waste your time, you have to come back and I talked to this person in the parking lot for one hour. I just wasted $14 that I could have made. Yeah, because a lot of people always said, oh, I met this person, I waste my time. No, you just lost money too. Mm. Doc, if you put your brain and said, oh, I talked to this person for two hours, I lost, I lost, I waste my time and I lost $28. Doc, if you figure out this game, uh, actually you lost then, money. Then, then you become much more savvy with your time, right? This way, which I do allows right. you to start. Yes. This way, I tell people when people mm -hmm. call me, said, "Okay, did you know you actually make me lose money now?" <laughs> I said, "What, Riyadh? You actually make me lose money now." Right. Well, I want the people know, right. Doc. If you can get to this game, if you know by hour, and you know, and if you said, "Okay, I work from nine to six, my job." And after 6 p.m., you don't make no money. He said, how can I make money from 6 p.m. to the next day? Mm. And if you go focus about this, you're going to change your life. Because yeah. a lot of people know only the surface. Mm. You have to know, you have to go, you have to go deeper. Right. A lot of people like, ah, oh, I want to make this. Me, how are you going to make it? I don't know. Don't. A lot of people get up crying without, instead get up with agenda. Like, a lot of people get up crying. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, Cry. because they're in that fear, scarcity, anxiety, you know, and, and when you're when you're sitting in that energy, you can't be in a place of excitement for what you can create. And you can't make money unless you're creating something. That's and just the way it is. Exactly. Some, la, la, my friend last time called me and said, oh, Riyadh, uh, I don't know why I'm lazy. I said, you're not lazy. You just have poor thinking. Mm. A lot of people think I'm lazy. No, you're not lazy. You, you have poor thinking. Because you, your way of thinking is not is not you have to to have to make and there are people said I'm tired you're not tired you just an inspire mm -hmm. don't I tell everybody so how does one get inspired I want to move to that question if you're sitting on the couch and you're lazy and you've kind of given up yeah. wh how do you step into inspiration what would you advise people who's your circle mm -hmm. who you talk all day on the phone mm -hmm. if you tell me who you talk all day on the phone I can tell you how much money you have in your bank <laughs> I can tell you exactly. <laughs> Like a lot of people missing, like, mm -hmm. like talking to negativity people, watching the news, talk to her friends. Yeah, she talk yeah. about drama and broke up. And after I said, oh my god, oh my, oh my god, like people missing, like mm -hmm. who you talk all day in your phone. Mm -hmm. Doc, you have to divide your day in three. Thirty-three percent people below you to make you feel good. Okay. Thirty-three percent people like you to talk about the same mm -hmm. thing. What you talking? And thirty-three percent people ten times advanced than you. Mm -hmm. Don't, before you say good night to yourself, said, before you say good night to yourself, said, who I talk today mm -hmm. and change my life. Hmm. What's something I learned today? If you never learn nothing, you pick up a book yeah. and read or yes. something. Who, what I learned today. And I think there's no excuses today because, you know, and again, let's say you're not a reader. I'm a huge reader, so yeah. I'm a fan of books. I'm a fan of writing yeah. books. I'm a fan of reading books. Yeah. But let's say you're not. There's this little thing called YouTube which is free information, people. It's free information. Assuming you're not sitting there watching a cat roll a ball off a table, right? Do that if you need a bit of a break. And then jump into all of the free content, all of the free information, all of the stuff that so many of these masters are posting and sharing with you and see what inspires you, right? Exactly. Like I tell people, you have something called Google. Right. Go Google some things that... How can I make money? Like it's the world at our fingertips. If, if, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're struggling selling, said how can I be better I'm gonna salesman? I'm going to Google that when I get off later. Google exactly. how can I make money? How can I be That's better so salesman? Awesome. And you give you all everything. This is what I do. Which pl I need to, if you want to be a speaker, which, which page I need to be a speaker? Like a lot of people, if you don't ask question, mm -hmm. the answer is no. Mm -hmm. If you don't ask question, the answer is no already because you, you never so ask you may any well questions. ask and, and, and try. And, and the other thing that I say to piggyback on that is, and even if the answer, if, if you ask and you get a no, okay, which there's 50-50 chance you're going to get a yes, but let's say you get a no, well, th that's the worst they can say is no. And so you're just right back to where you were. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So there's nothing lost with trying. A no is another yes with trying. A no is a next, right? Yeah, no yeah. is another. Like when Absolutely. people said, I lost. You know, lost, you learn. It's, mm -hmm. it's not winning and losing. It's winning and learning. Mm -hmm. And again, that's, a, that's an attitude. That's a, that's a way of thinking. That's a perception. Is your mother proud of you? Yes, yes. And do you know what something I realized? When, when I came here, yes, I love her so much. When I came here, I thought all the, is my mission is about my mom. Okay. I realized my mission is more bigger than my mom. My, it's What's not about mission? my mom. My mission is like, uh, because America, my mom have food. Uh, because America, my mom have hot water. Because America, my mom don't cry no more. 
Doc, my mission is like creating a job and, and giving back. And um, and um, I'm an average person coming here because I love my mom so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, you're brilliant. I'm not brilliant. I'm just average person, love my mom. Saw my mom crying every day. I thought I need to do something. Mm-hmm. Someone have to do something. Don't create jobs and 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 keep going in life. And um, uh, I think I'm big in legacy too. Legacy. I think I, I think your legacy is going to be uh, incredibly powerful. You are only just getting started, yes. which is what I love. Yeah. You know, we have, I talk about this all the time, the oldest man in the USA died a few weeks ago at the age of 112 years old. So think about how many 20-year increments you have still left for yourself between yeah. now and 112. I want you to think about that at home as well. There's a heck of a lot of 20-year increments. Yeah. Look at the growth that can happen if you set some intentions. The $2 American Dream... With Riyad Hamdi, I would urge you to jump over to Amazon and pick it up. I would urge you to jump over and start following him on Instagram to see what it is that he's doing that can possibly help you if you're in any sort of self-branding, self-promotion, and you're not taking advantage of the, um, the mastery and the skill and the opportunity to learn from people that have actually taken the time to learn then you're doing yourself a disservice. So whatever you do, his name is right up here. Follow him on all his platforms. Uh, any parting words for our audience today? What do you want to leave us with as we go into 2019? 2019, the, the one thing I want to tell everybody, train for legacy, don't train for life. We all have 24 hours. We all have 86,400 seconds. Every second count in life. Get up in the morning and do your best and, and never give up. Never give up in the end. You're going to win a life in the end. Uh, remember, we're all guests in this planet. Let's leave the best memories, and let's w- let's work together. Let's work. We're a team here. You know, we're we're a team together. We absolutely are a team, and I thank you for being part of our team here and for tuning in with me every Thursday here on LA Talk Radio and TV with me, your host Katerina Kazayas, and our special guest today, Mr. Riyad Hamdi, um, who is you know just a shining light um, in his own right, uh, and I love that. I like to attract that. I like to help share that with you. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, don't miss us next week. Um, stay tuned on all my social media as well, if you could, because I have a lot of announcements coming up, a lot of very cool projects, collaborations, and um, good information that is going to be coming through from my sphere of influence through to you folks. Um, I want to wish everyone a really happy new year. year. It's the year of the pig, if you don't know, which in the Chinese um, zodiac astrology means wealth and prosperity and abundance. I think it's time for a little wealth and prosperity and abundance. I think we're all ready for that. I would say yes to that across every facet of your life, if you could. And um, yeah, for now, we wish you all the best. Thank we'll you. you Happy week. New Year. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Enjoy, everyone. Take care. Oh, and then we get into the production. Hang on. My mouse isn't working. Hang on. All right. Stay with me. All right. We're out. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>